pastor church in the office, and I said, well, we talk, we need to talk about salvation first. Amen. And so I explained to them that Jesus came and died to pay the penalty for their sins, and we need to accept him as Lord and Savior. Do you want to do that? I mean, I'm just a little more involved in that, but yeah. So I led them in a prayer of acceptance, and that was their born-again moment. And today was just a public testimony that they have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that again. Thank you. I decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. sermon is inspired by a little baby that we've been praying for. Mm -hmm. She was born a couple of weeks ago, missing an eye. And they're not sure that this little baby will have vision in the one eye that she does have. They've been to uh, pediatric, what do you call them, pediatric... Uh, yeah, in Philadelphia, and recently they went out to Dallas, Texas, because there's some experts out there, and it's raining. Anyway, they just don't know yet, so um, this sermon is inspired by that little girl. It's devastating to her parents and her family, because they just don't know what's going to happen, but the truth is... I have to get in here. The truth is, bad things happen to good people. Yes, they do. Bad things happen to good people. We just don't know why bad things happen to good people. We don't know why. We just don't know. I think about Connie that was in our church, you know. We prayed. We believed. We had faith. She seemed to be improving. Then she got worse. We prayed again. We believed again. But after a couple of years of that battle, God took her home. Her husband misses her. Her, her kids miss her. Her grandkids miss her terribly. And we all treasure her memory. Connie was a sweetheart. She was a good person. Why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know. We don't know. But we didn't get what we expected to get when we prayed. We expected to, to her to be healed. And we always come with that expectation. That's what faith is. Sometimes God does it. Well, he always does it, but sometimes he does it in his own way that we don't expect him that, or that we don't think that we want to see. But so what can we learn about God through this? Think about Joseph. In the Bible, he was sold into slavery by his brothers, 17 years old. Can you imagine if all your brothers sold you, your family sold you to somebody into slavery, Never known if you'd see them again. And he, they were just annoyed with him, so they, and they were going to kill him. But the one brother said, no, no, let's not do that. We'll just take that coat and put blood on it, and animal blood on it. And, and, we're, and then they sold him into slavery. He wound up in Egypt. We're not told how he felt emotionally about that. You can imagine. We just, tell, we just have the story about what happened. But just look into that and imagine how he felt with them turning against him like that. He was in anguish. He wasn't a bad person, but bad things happen to good people. Think about Moses. You know, Pharaoh ordered all of the Hebrew boys to be killed as soon as they were born. He was afraid they were getting too big, too many Hebrews in that land. And the Hebrew midwives didn't obey. So then he made this order in Exodus chapter 1 verse 22 
Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, every Hebrew boy, boy that is born to you, must you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Those kids didn't do anything. Bad things happened to a lot of them. Moses was spared. I have to think that many Hebrew baby boys were not spared. They were thrown into the Nile. They were innocent. They were good people, but bad things happened to them. How about the massacre of the innocents in Matthew chapter 2? When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious when he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity. <laughs> who were two years old or younger in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Innocent little boys. Again, murdered. They didn't do anything. They were good people. Why? In our human reasoning, we think that this is all wrong. And it is. But we wonder why God didn't intervene. We just don't know why. And that's frustrating because we want to know why. We're, people are inquisitive. They want to know what's going on and why it's going on. We just want to know why, but we don't know why. And that's frustrating. Sometimes God intervenes and brings healing or some other victory, and sometimes He doesn't, or at least not that we can see. He brings that victory in some <coughs> other way. Connie is in heaven. She's here. That's the way God decided to do it. Amen. The sovereignty of God. We have to understand and we have to know that we who are not omniscient or eternal cannot expect to understand all of God's ways. Amen. Amen. He's God and we're not. <laughs> Job was a righteous man. His life was pleasing to God. It says he was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned the evil. In other words, Job was a good man. Or at least as one could be without the, before the Savior came. The only goodness that we have to impress God with is that which is put on us, the righteousness of Christ, when we get saved. Job was subjected then to unimaginable suffering. Unimaginable. He lost everything. His wife told him to curse God and die. Nice way for a wife to be. No one encouraged him. And Job said this. He said, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Yet, I will argue my way to his faith. Job didn't understand why God had allowed the things he did. But he knew God was good, and therefore he continued to trust in God. Ultimately, that's all we can do. This trust. Even when God is doing things that we don't, that we don't approve of the way he does. So why do Bad things happen to good people. These points are taken from a site online. Actually, there are no good people. There's a difference between innocent and good. Small children, babies, the unborn, they're innocent. But our goodness comes from God. Ecclesiastes 7, 
20, surely if there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. And then Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Actually, in a pure sense, there are, there are no good. We do the best we can. Little kids um, are innocent. Bad things happen to good people, but God uses those bad things for an ultimate lasting good. So we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. That's in Romans 8, 28. So when Joseph, innocent of wrongdoing, finally came through his horrific suffering, he was able to see God's good plan in it. Number three, bad things happen to good people, but those bad things equip believers for deeper ministry. Praise be to the Father, this is the second thing, of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So, when bad things happen to us, we learn from those bad things that we have acquired comfort in those from God, and then we can help other people who are going through the same kind of trials. Amen? Amen. So those with battle scars can better help those going through the battles. The next point is bad things happen to good people. And the worst things happen to the best person. Jesus was the only truly righteous one. He knew no sin. No one else could ever say that. Yet he suffered more than we can imagine. Because he was taking our punishment onto him on the cross. We follow in his footsteps. He says, if you suffer, this is in 1 Peter chapter 2, for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats and said he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Jesus is no stranger to our pain. God allows good things to happen for a reason. He allows bad things to happen for a reason. So whether we understand his reasons, and that's beyond our understanding, but remember that God is good. He's just. He's loving. He's merciful. Often bad things happen to us that we sim simply can't understand. We don't get it. We don't get it. But our action, reaction should be just to trust in Him. Amen. Trust in the Lord in all your ways and acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 walk. We walk by faith and not by sight. Our God does things in ways that are sometimes impossible to understand. Most times it's impossible to understand. Our puny little minds, especially my puny little mind, we're not up to the task of understanding God's ways. So what's left for us to do? Trust Him. No matter how bleak things seem, no matter what, trust. Trust God. He will not forsake us. Believe that good things are coming. Sometimes we have to wait until we leave the planet to see those good things. That happens. But they're coming. You just have to be faithful and trust. Psalm 46 is my favorite psalm. The first, the first two verses. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, 
though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. We don't need to be afraid. This is my favorite verse in the whole Bible, Psalm 46.10. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In our stillness is that trusting and believing in God. Be still and know that I am God. So if you're having troubles, or I should say when you're having troubles, because if you never had any troubles, well, they're coming. <laughs> if you just got over a trouble, well, yeah, there's another one coming. <laughs> It doesn't matter how good you are or how good you try to be, we still live under the curse. You can blame man on Eve and Adam if you want to, but um, we're, that's the way it is. Troubles will come. If you get to be the vintage that I am, you've seen some troubles already. <laughs> if you haven't seen them, they're coming. But with God, you can overcome the effects of trouble. They're still going to come. We're not being punished. Jesus took our punishment. Trust God. Be faithful. You will see Him. When our, then our troubles will be over. Eternity awaits. You know, when little Dexter, I was there officiating the funeral of this of Dexter, Stephen Haley's son that was that died in utero, and I said he he will never see his parents' face, but he has already seen the face of God. Yeah. Amen. That's our victory. That's our victory. If you know him as your Lord and Savior, if you trust in him as Lord and Savior, then that's the victory, and it's coming. It's coming. It came for Connie. <laughs> and we have victories. We have little victories, aches and pains. We pray for people that go away. We pray for situations that God takes care of them. But our ultimate victory comes in eternity. The ultimate victory. Because then there's no more tears, no more crying, no more suffering. No more pain. Just, just God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is there anyone here that needs prayer today? I'd like to ask for uh, 